Hi, today I'm going to show you start to finish how to set up a easy stock sync and or price and stock sync. And so using easy CSV and uh, a CSV file on FTP or a, a URL or maybe you want to email it to us. So first things first is you're going to want to go to apps.shopify.com slash easy CSV. The button here will say log in to install on your store. You're going to want to click that to install it in your Shopify admin. After you get it after you click install, you can choose our free plan so you can test while you do setup or, or sign up for one of our paid plans immediately. We offer easy discounts if we don't get it working well and we have great support. Uh, once you install it in your store, you'll be able to go to settings, uh, apps and sales channels, and you'll see it um, in your listing here. Cool. So Easy CSV really helps you get files from different places automatically process those files and update your store. So in our case, we get a file from our vendor. This is what the file looks like. It has a SKU column. It has a stock column, you know, available stock. It can be called stock. It can be called quantity. doesn't matter what the columns are labeled. You just need a column for SKU, a column for stock. This file has uh, manufacturer's suggested retail price. So basically the price that we should set in our store. And it also has the cost, which is usually the cost you're paying, you know, wholesale, and then you're going to sell it. So in this case, this uh, paddle board costs $1,000 for me to buy, and then I sell it for $5,000. Or this drum set costs $50, and I sell it for $200. Sometimes you only want to do stock syncing. That's fine. It can have more columns in it. Uh, you just need some column to identify the product variant in Shopify and another column to have the data you want to set in Shopify. Okay, so let's pretend that this file is on an FTP server. So many suppliers or vendors host their files on a FTP server, which is a file transfer protocol server. Sometimes it's FTP, sometimes it's SFTP, secure file transfer. Sometimes it's FTPS. Um, you know, those three are the same thing. It's basically just a place to house files. So what they'll usually do is give you credentials or like login info to that server. So you'll download something here. I have this um, application called Viper Lite. It's just a way to log into an FTP server and view the files, and then you can download them to your computer. You can also, the most famous one is called FileZilla. There's another one called CyberDuck. You'll just want to install those. Or you can ask your supplier or vendor just to send you the, file, the latest file. Um, you just need the file on your computer to set all this up. And so I've downloaded this file onto my computer here. That's how I'm viewing these. Uh, that's why I'm viewing this file with the data. I've downloaded it uh, locally on my computer so it can help me set up. So we've installed the app. You know, we verified that it's on, in on our store. We have our products already in the store that we want to update. Um, you'll see on this drum set, you'll see that I have the SKU already in here that matches the file. So I would expect this drum, I need it to update to 75 items are in stock and I want the price to be 200 and the cost to be 50. You'll see the price right now is 43 and the cost is 22 and there's only three on hand. So now let's go to Easy CSV. I'm on my local machine, but just go to easycsv.io. You'll click new import flow if you need to and you say, where are the file data coming from? We're gonna say FTP. You know, if it's coming from a URL, you can also put a URL in for the file. If you're going to email the file to Easy CSV, you can do email attachments. Sometimes you can forward emails from your own email you're getting. Um, we accept files many different ways. So we're going to say this one's FTP. We're going to take that file on our computer and we're going to drag it here for setup. You might not have this uh, import flow name. This is the first one. I'm just going to call it uh, inventory updater. And I don't need price or cost. I'm just going to do a available stock right now. Okay. You can leave these checked and then therefore you can map price later. I'll just leave that checked for now. We're going to say where we're going to send the data. We're going to send it to Shopify. Cool. So you'll see that actually we automatically mapped some fields, but I'm just going to go through what this looks like. So this is a page where you can just drag and drop the file. So I could drag the file right here and it would update my store. I can email the files and attachment to this email. Um, I have a limit to how many rows per file there can be according to my plan. Uh, if you go to the import data flow, this kind of details how the whole process works. This top is how we get files, where we get the files from. 
you know, you can email them. We can get them from certain places on a schedule. You can upload from a, from the import page here. There's just different ways we can get the files. The middle is basically the configuration. So this is the columns. You've told Easy CSV to pull. You ignore any columns you don't list. You can filter out data you don't want. You can add things called virtual fields where maybe you want to add 30% to the price. Um, you can do that. And then the destinations at the bottom. Okay, so you'll select your account. If you have multiple Shopify stores, you'll say the action in this case is updating existing SKUs. And then you're gonna do a mapping right here. This mapping basically tells Shopify and Easy CSV what columns from the file match what fields in Shopify. So in this case, the field in Shopify SKU, we wanna choose the SKU column from the spreadsheet. Quantity, we're gonna choose available stock. If we wanted to keep price up to date, we can choose price. If we wanted to keep cost up to date, we can choose cost. We don't have to choose these if we're just doing stock updates. Um, but I'm gonna choose them just for this demo. Cool, and you can map a bunch of other things as well, including meta fields. We're gonna save, and now this flow is ready. So I could email the files of the attachment here. Um, I'm going to drag and drop the file right here just for testing. If you're on a free plan, just make a test file with three rows or less. So, you know, if you get a big file from your vendor, just like load the file in Google Sheets and delete all the rows, put the header in like one or two rows. Make sure that the SKUs are in your store Sometimes the file has a ton of SKUs you don't carry. So just make sure there's a couple rows in there that you know you carry and you make a small test file. We'll import these two records. It queues up the import. You'll see it goes into a queue. Sometimes it can take a moment to begin. You'll see that you get emails of different statuses and then it tells you when it's done. When it's done, you can refresh this log view and you can see all the API requests that we make on your behalf to Shopify. Um, you can see the data we sent. You'll see that this price for this variant was updated to 5,200. You can see the stock and what was it, what it was updated to, 13 and 75. You can see that the cost was updated here. So if you go back to the uh, import page, you'll see at the bottom is this log and you get this link to this uh, report every time. You also get emails if you want. And let's go look at the store quick. This is one of the items, if we refresh, you'll see the price is now 200, the cost is 50, and there's 75 available. There was another product that was also updated, which is this paddleboard. You'll see the price is 399 now. And you're all set. So the last step is, you know, we don't really want to drag and drop the file here every time we want to automate this. So we can either go to the import flow and go to scheduled fetcher here, or we can click scheduled fetcher up here. And this is a way to set up automation to go and fetch that file on a schedule. So you can every 24 hours or four hours. That's our recommendation for these inventory files. Most of the time inventory files aren't updated more than that. Also, if the files are very large, you won't be able to finish processing a file every hour, every 10 to 20, definitely not every 10 to 20 minutes. So I'd recommend starting with 24 hours. And you can say, where, where do you want to get the data from? In our case, we wanted to get it from FTP. We would put in all the FTP info in all these fields. We would make sure we said the path to the file and the file name. Then we would save it and it would be on. Uh, and then it will run every 24 hours and automatically get the file and update your store with the latest from the file. If you are, have get the file from a URL, you can click URL and then put the URL here and you'll have an automated flow to update your stock and pricing. And that's it. If you need help with FTP, there's a lot of tricky FTP servers. Uh, just put all the info in and save it and then uh, message us on our live chat or email our support team and we can go in and help you troubleshoot. There's a lot of tricky things about FTP, um, and sometimes we help a lot of people just get it to work. Okay, please reach out to our chat or email, and if we don't respond right away, we always do, um, and have fun.